really delighted today to have Maureen Jennings along with us. And Maureen is the author of Murdoch Mysteries. And I don't think there is a person in Canada that doesn't know about the Murdoch Mysteries. And it's been a long running TV series on CBC and a series of very successful books uh, by Maureen. And, and of course, Maureen has written a host of other uh, novels as well, which we'll talk about, one of which uh, was the inspiration for the TV series, The Bomb Girls. And I mentioned that because that was one of my personal favorites. I, I love that show. So let's say welcome to Maureen Jennings. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. I love talking to you. Oh, it's great to see you again. It really is. I, I want to start off by talking about the novel that started the TV series, The Murdoch Mysteries. And, and this year is a special year. It's celebrating its 25th anniversary. Would you have believed that? Not at all. I, it's, I still don't. I think that's a mistake. It must be like five years or something. That yeah, 25 years. Amazing. Yes. Since, since it was first published. And in the new edition, if I may say, I have added a, a short story just for fun, really, that, I, again, I really enjoyed doing. So they put that at the end just so you'd, people are getting something a little bit new. Same old, but new. <laughs> well, the book is called Except the Dying, and the dying. It's, a, it's available right now? Yes, yes, it is. And tell me, how many in the entire series are, are there in the Murdoch Mysteries? The seven novels and one novella, um, and then, then I have other ones, but the, yeah, the Murdoch from that first adaptation, uh, there are now 15 Murdoch seasons. Looks like we probably will go on. And uh, there are three movies of the week. So, yeah, is, who'd have thought it? it <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Now, you, you've written other novels as well, other series of novels. You had uh, uh, D.I., uh, Tom Tyler. Uh, Christine Morris, and Charlotte Frayne, a uh, private investigator. Uh, and I've often wondered, when authors do this, they have other, other characters that they spin off into different stories. W why, why is that? Is it because the original person kind of gets tired for them and they, they're looking for something new? Is it to broaden the demographic base? Why do you go into these other uh, novels? It's not always that thought out, probably. I know with, with Murdoch, um, I wasn't that I was tired of him at all. I just su suddenly decided I wanted to move to another series. And certainly as a female, writing as a female was, was a nice change instead of um, a Victorian male, third person. So it was nice to write in the first person. So the Christine Morris, then I had to go to third person for Tom Tyler, and now back to first person for Charlotte Frayne. And it, it's a nice change, actually. Now, you know, certainly Murdoch has got a life on TV, but... But they kind of complain, you know, like, hey, when am I coming back? And I go, no, <laughs> shut up. I'm tired. Leave me alone. <laughs> and then I well, you, you have a book uh, coming out uh, very soon now with uh, Charlotte. And I believe you have another one in the works. I have one coming out. It should be out in September. And that's called Cold Snap. Um and that one, uh, sometimes people will say to me, which is your own favorite book? And of course, that's like, which is your favorite child? And one always makes a polite statement. But that particular book, I got into material unexpectedly. I found material that was so compelling. I was very, very glad to write that book, actually. Um, 
I found, I don't have it, I should have showed it to you. I, came, I got a book that was written in 1933. The novel is set in 1936. Um, and it's a true story. It's a man's autobiography about being in prison. Uh, it's called I Was Hitler's Prisoner. He was a Hungarian journalist. I'm just saying this because it's, alas, still relevant. So he was, a pris uh, he was uh, put in jail at that time because he and the newspaper um, criticized Adolf Hitler and the Nazi regime. That's all they did. They didn't do anything else. And they were put indefinitely in prison. And so that was, and I came across this book. And I just thought it was such an astonishing book. So I've been able to use it in the novel, fictionalize the character a little bit, but mostly it, it's about that situation. And again, I keep saying in 1936, people really could see where the world was heading. 1939, World War II, um, and it seemed fear or whatever, all the complex reasons, it wasn't averted. So that's what I say. It's disconcertingly and scarily relevant. You know, Russia, Ukraine, rattle, yeah. rattle, rattle. Yeah. Anyway, so that book was an important book for me to write. And that will be coming out in September. The new book, I'm still searching around to settle on something. And I, I've learned to trust that what interests me, hopefully will interest a reader. So in this case, I'm starting to get very much into um, the way the city of Toronto in 1937 handled people who were poor, poor relief it was called of course, and it's very interesting. So that's where I'm going now, and we'll see. What Lots to up. keep you occupied. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I look at uh, all the books that you've read and, and, and look at how the media and the press have reacted to them, uh, you're, you're very blessed uh, with so many positive comments and certainly about you as a writer as well as the books themselves how how important are th these reviews to you and and to the success of, of your books they're very important and it's not that it's it's not that i uh, discount anything but the ones that really make a difference are uh, where, like any other writer probably, you feel understood. I mean, it's nice if someone says, oh, I really liked your book, it was so funny, and I go, hmm, <laughs> that's all right. But if there's a real sense that someone has read carefully and got to what I felt I was trying to say, that's just ecstatic, that just is wonderful to experience and, and that it's it, that has happened and it's been lovely but one of your books uh, I, I see has gone into an audible book and calm fior is the uh, is the narrator how marvelous is that to have such a a brilliant canadian actor uh, doing the read uh, will you be doing more of the audio audible books uh, uh, in that series? That's not up to me, actually, Mike. Uh, listen, I'm very happy if it's done. It's like um, that's the publisher. The publisher gets hold of uh, somebody like Inaudible Books or whatever. It's the same with the movies, TV, really. That they take it, as it were, and, you know, I'm very glad about that, but I don't make those decisions. But yes, you know, People like Colm or R.H. Thompson, and I just go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, I, I find it a, um, a real salute to the book 
when someone uh, of of that ilk uh, says, "Yeah, I'd I'd like to do that. I'd like to read that that book," and I, I think that's a a lovely gesture. And even though you didn't have a hand in it, it must have felt nice to uh, <laughs> see the end result. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, now, before you became a full time writer, uh, you were a, a psychotherapist, and I, I've wondered whether or not that background and that experience has that helped you in in writing the books that you you've uh, completed i would say immeasurably um because in a funny way psychotherapy can be like a mystery story like someone comes and they don't understand necessarily why that isn't working or why they're anxious or so on and so on. So it is a bit like a mystery in which you try to find out. These are the symptoms. This is the behavior. Where is it coming from? So it's not that that, yeah, I, I think being able to understand people, us, me, people, uh, has been very, very helpful because of this sense of that we're all multi-layered and we're all complex, really. Uh, so I, I like to bring that into character development as much as possible. So I, uh, I really want to do that. I hope, I don't, I've never liked two-dimensional villains, for example. Um, so I try to give even my villains some complexity like, why are they the way they are? That's always the question. Why are you the way you are? Mm -hmm. because, yeah. So, yeah, it, it was invaluable. Absolutely. Let's talk about the, the TV series for a second. You, you mentioned you're now into the 15th season. And uh, like yourself, we would expect that there'll be a 16th season. It, it seems to be one of those programs that is so uh, popular and so well received by the fans that you just can't see an end in sight. <laughs> that that adds up to a lot of episodes over fifteen years. Sure does. Yeah. Yes, it really does. I don't know how many. We just passed two hundred, I think. We passed two hundred. My goodness. My goodness. Now you've had a, a role in the TV series, both in the production side of it, but also as one of the, the writers. And I know you did uh, uh, one of the uh, scripts that was on uh, just in the past 10 days. And maybe you could yes, I did. share with us about that. Oh, I, I'd love to. That was such fun because it, I, I make this joke. And, you know, many years ago, we, Stephen Harper came on the show and that was wonderful. That was really thrilling. But even, sorry, I shouldn't say even more. Equally as thrilling is that we had Nick Nurse, the coach of the Raptors, did a little cameo. And that was really nice. I'm a huge <laughs> Raptors fan. Uh, my husband and I never miss a game. And, um, oh, it was a little while ago now where I started to investigate that. And James May Smith, of course, you know, the Canadian who developed uh, the game. And that was really fun. So I did a shorter version, which we couldn't film because of COVID, because no one could be physically close. So that started to ease up. And so we did another version where, and, and I honestly, at the end of my script, I put a little note on impulse. I put a note. Wouldn't it be great if we could get a raptor or Nick Nurse? <laughs> and I thought it was so unlikely. I thought it would be too much money, scheduling, and so on and so on. So that was a while. And then the next thing I know, guess what? <laughs> We've got Nick Nurse. So he came to the set. I was having to be able to, we went to the set. He's a lovely, lovely guy and a very good actor. I think people keep saying to him, if you give up coaching, you should take up acting because he's very comfortable in, with the camera. I oh, think nice. that was a, so that was really, really, really fun. So thanks. That was that just happened. That was kind of the icing on the cake for your for your efforts uh, writing that script. 
totally, totally, totally. And a very, very unexpected. I really, as I say, I didn't expect it. Thought it would be part of the question, but I thought, well, you know, put it down, see what happens. And uh, Salisbury Films, Christina Jennings, she's fantastic. I think she said, this is a good idea. She spoke to the Minister of Sports, who's unfortunately, alas, I forget her name at the moment. And she said, oh, absolutely. This is the Canadian story. Let's do it. Not with <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> with James Naismith from Almont. Oh, marvelous. That, that, that's a great story. Yeah. Now, we, we, we know that the series in Canada has been a, a big success in, in ratings and, and garnered a, a lot of uh, loyal fans over the years. Has it had uh, good success outside of our borders? Apparently, uh, it's one of the most popular shows in France, which is great. It's all over the place. I know. I don't know why. I mean, I'm, I think they obviously they must. I don't know if they dub or they translate. I don't know. Really? And now we keep getting all these notes from the States, like, where can we watch it? Where can we watch it? Which we say, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm bemused and humbled and grateful. And, you know, I mean, it's such hard work. And, and as you can imagine, in the last two years, it's been so challenging to um, create a show where you also have to be very careful about COVID protocols so it didn't affect me by now. But initially, when it was all starting, I know there was a little note to the writers is trying to create scenes where literally people are not close to each other. So no romance, forget that, you know, unless they yeah. walk out of the room or something. So that was really a challenge. And, and no, there was no outbreak of COVID at all in those two years. But it was tough. It was really, yeah. really hard. If you can imagine, you know, literally the actors would have their masks on while they were rehearsing and their masks off, and then they'd do it, you know, really tough. Yes, and, and hard on all the behind-the-scenes people as well. Uh, yeah. Everybody masked up uh, all through the production process. The sound mixing and editing, everything else. It's just complicated yeah. as all get out. Very complicated, yes. Yeah. So I'm glad that, that, that it's worked and it get, seems to be easing up a little bit. And that's partly why we could do the basketball scenes. But even then, you know, they had to be careful and yeah. make sure, because there were younger kids involved in the basketball scenes, make sure that there were only a couple of places where they were physically close to each other. Really, just things you don't even think about. Just yeah, yeah. Think about the, the series has uh, uh, made some of the characters uh, very recognizable, and, uh, and and I'm sure they're delighted with the continued success of the show. Uh, Yannick Bisson and uh, Johnny Harris as a couple of examples, uh, and of course Johnny, uh, I, I think you know had a springboard to doing some additional uh, TV as well. Um, must be uh, must be great for the cast as well. I I think so. They they're hanging out there. They don't. They're not asking to be written out, as they put it in the business. Will you write me out? Those <laughs> 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 <Opposed> two. <laughs> so, well, I yeah. noticed too that uh, you know uh, on the fan pages, uh, and this is uh, I think a a real tribute to you as an author. Like there are, I, I think I noticed at least three fan pages for Murdoch Mysteries, but then there's the fan page for Maureen Jennings as well. And I thought, what a lovely tribute that is, that there are people that love the way you write and want to discuss the books between themselves and share. And it's one of those cases where social media is um, really doing something nice for the community of readers. I think it's a, a lovely tribute to you. Oh, thank you. Right. Yeah, no, that, I, I like that. I try to answer every email because um, I do. I want to, you know, like questions sometimes. 
sometimes very simple questions, which like, where did you film that thing? You know, or why did he say that? <laughs> you know, I, I, what can I say? Nothing to do with me. I I, I didn't write that. <laughs> anyway, so uh, well, they, that, they they are they are nice to see, and uh, uh, certainly uh, they are dedicated uh, dedicated fans. And during this pandemic period, which has been so hard on everybody in, in the world, uh, but it, it's also been an opportunity for all of us to um, engage with things that we enjoy. And I think books have been um, a godsend for many of us. Um, I've had the ability to spend more time with books because I've got more time to be apart from everyone, so uh, yeah. certainly for the book business, it it must be uh, must be a, a good boost up uh, for not only sales but for interest in the written word. I hope so because you know there was all this rumor going around that books were dead. I said, oh really? And then hey, they're not. No, no, because <laughs> that would be horrible. But yeah, no, I think that's true. That, my sense is that we, I myself can, I speak for myself, that I'm just sort of getting used to what's changed in a way, you know. Um, how is this going to make a difference? Can we keep up all the good things that we've learned about interaction or are we going to forget it again? You know, let's hope not. Let's hope yeah. we don't forget Yeah, point well, point well taken. Maureen, thanks for spending time with us today. It's really delightful to chat with you again, and uh, I'm so thrilled for all the success you continue to enjoy, uh, well-deserved, and you're a hard-working author, and uh, as creative as all get out. Oh, before we go, I meant to ask you, your book on creativity, is right. that still available? I don't know, actually. Um... I didn't I see it on your list of books. You know what? Unfortunately, it does fall off the radar. I'll check on that. I don't know. Yeah, it was that was another fun book, but it was, yeah, early on there. And that's right. one that I would uh, I would love to have in my own library because I'm always interested in how creative people um, not only do their work but their views on on creativity as it relates to just being a human being. So I'll, uh, I'll see if I can search that one up. Search, search that one up. Okay. I'll look and see if I have a copy too, because I'm sure we do. And I'll send it to you. Well, bless but your you heart. You have exercises to do, so you've got to do them and, you know, you can send them back to me. Excellent. But, uh, Excellent. That was, fun. I learned a lot from that book too. Thank you. Well, th thank you so much for today. This has been a lot of fun as usual and uh, all continued success. I, I hope things go as you hope in the coming year. Thanks very much, Maureen. Thank you so much. Hope to see you in the summer. <laughs>